Okay, so good day everyone. Today I'll guide you through a sample problem involving our stress strain diagrams. So let's answer problem 6.31 from Material Science and Engineering, an introduction, 9th edition, written by William Callister. So in the problem, it says that a specimen of magnesium having a rectangular cross section of dimensions 3.2 millimeters times 19.1 millimeters is deformed in tension. So it's under a tensile load. Using the load elongation data shown in the following table, this table here, answer these following questions. So from here and from the data given, we should be able to solve all of this. So first, let us plot the stress strain diagram. So to plot the stress strain diagram, kailangan muna natin makuha yung stress and strain. We don't plot load versus length because load is force and length is not strain. This is yung elongi. Ito yung kanyang length. Dito yung kanyang strain. So for stress, to get your stress, this is, what is stress? Force over area. We already have force here. To get area, we need to have the dimensions of the cross section. 3.2 mm times 19.1 mm so we compute for the cross-sectional area equals 3.2 times 19.1 get 61.12 millimeters squared ang stress natin ang units niyan is pascal pascal is newton per meter squared pag newton per millimeter squared siya it will become mega pascal or pascal times 10 to the 6. So for this one, to get the stress here, we just get the force over the cross-sectional area. We do this for all of our loads. So this will got equal to the load divided by your cross-sectional area. And I'll just put anchors. Dollar sign sa para hindi siya gumalaw. Pag rinag ko siya, and makuha natin yung stress. So ito yung stress profile natin. For strain naman, Strain is just uh, delta L or yung difference between the initial length and the length under uh, stress divided by the initial length. Or operationally, it will be L minus L naught over L naught. For L naught is the stress adds the length at uh, zero load. So in this case, to get that one, you just have strain minus this one. So hindi nagbabago yung ating L not, so I'll just anchor it. Then we divide all of this over yung initial natin, which is eto. Oh wait, sorry. Over... And again, anchor lang natin para pag rinag ko siya, hindi siya magkupat. Makita natin yung strain, no? Magically. Oh, kuha rin natin siya. Then, to plot the stress strain curve, just use, since we're not cavemen, we have technology, we can use Excel. So, I'm just gonna use itong scatter plot natin. Pero, makita mo, baliktad siya. So, to get one, uh, insert, Ito, gamitin natin ito. Kasi gusto ko may plot. Then, select data. Yung stress natin is in the y-axis. So, this is the y-axis. And yung strain natin, it's in the x-axis. Yan. And ito yung ating stress strain curve. Para lang may ano siya. Para maganda lang siyang tingnan. Lagyan natin siya ng axis. I can actually move this. To another sheet. So, yan siya. And para lang maganda, lagyan natin siya na access title. How do you do that? Access titles. Yan. So, yun nasa kaliwa. This is your stress. This is mega pascal. And yung nasa baba, this is your strain. And remember, strain is unitless because this is a length over length. Let's just make it a bit bigger so you guys can see. So yeah. So this is the stress strain diagram. 
so now let's compute for the modulus of elasticity. So yung modulus of elasticity natin, ito yung slope nung part ng stress strain diagram natin na linear or yung elastic region natin, kaya yung modulus of elasticity. So to get that, uh, we determine kung saan ba dito yung linear. So by visual inspection, nakita ko, ah, maka itong points sa to yung linear. So yung assumption natin dyan, since linear naman to, yan, we can take any two points here, 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 and dapat same yung kanyang slope. So if you're manually doing that, that. But since we're working in Excel naman, and I want my uh, data to be more precise, I'll take these four points. I'll fit a line there, and I'll take the slope to get the modulus of elasticity. So to do that, what I will do, I mean, for the Excel naman, so again, you uh, slope lang naman yung natin. So I'll just use Excel to get the slope of that one. So to do that, I'll add a new series. Uh, I'll name this Elastic Retro. Yung X values nito, I decided yung first four na strain points natin. While yung stress va yung Y naman natin is the first four stress values. Yan. So nakuha natin yung elastic region. And tong sa elastic region na to, yan, I can fit a trend line, a linear trend line. And paano ba ilagay yun? And itong trend line na to, papakita ko yung kanyang equation. Pati ni R squared kasi para makita natin na line talaga siya. So nakita natin yung R squared niya. Yan. 0 0.9999. So ibig sabihin yan, line. Linear nga talaga yung fit natin. And y is equal to 48791x minus 0 0.2945. Itong 0 0.2945 parang factor of error lang yan. Ang hinahanap lang natin is slope, stress versus strain. Y is stress, X is strain. So, yung slope natin is 48,791. So, yung ating modulus of elasticity will then be 48,791 megapascals or 48.791 gigapascal. So, kinuha lang natin yung slope ng elastic feature natin. So, natin ito. It's 48,791 gigapascal. So, dapat G. So now let's determine yung yield strength natin at the strain offset of 0 0.02. So paano ba tong strain offset natin to? So yung strain offset natin to, essentially ang gagawin natin is we'll create a parallel line to this elastic region here. And kung saan siya tatama, so offset natin siya ng 0 0.002. 0 0.002, hindi 0 0.02, kundi 0.002. So, nandito siya. Offset natin siya hanggang tumama siya dito sa stress strain diagram natin. So, yung intersection nung line na yun, nung bagong offset na tangent line natin, with the stress strain diagram would be our offset yield point. So, to do that here, I uh, already prepared a uh, dummy line equation here. Ito lang yung parang tangent natin. So, I'll plot it here. So, lagay natin. This is a offset line. So, this is our offset line. Yung x ko. Because we can define a line using two points. And y, two points. Yan. So, nakita nyo? Ito yung offset line mo. And, yung intersection ng stress strain diagram natin, with this offset line is at around this one. So, para makita natin, let's add um, axis, minor axis. Paano maglagay ng minor axis? <laughs> tick marks. Lagyan natin ng outside tick marks. Outside. So, sa minor axis natin, it's around 140 megapascals. So, makita natin, maybe, ito yan, dito. Uh, 148. So, baka, yung yield strength natin, uh, hindi naman baka. So, yung yield strength natin at ano, it's around 140 MPA. 140 mega pascal. So, ito yung yield strength natin at the strain offset of 0 0.0. Now, we determine yung tensile strength. So, paano natin determine yung tensile strength? 
So, pag pinadetermine sa ating tensile strength, usually, yung pinapahanap sa atin dyan is yung ultimate tensile strength natin. Or UTS. Yung UTS natin, ito lang yung pinakamataas na point sa ating stress strain diagram pag engineering stress strain diagram, which we have here. So, the highest point will be this point here. But hindi na tayo kailangan manghula kung ano tong point na to. Kasi meron naman tayong values. So, ano may pinakamataas dito? Itong 234.62 megapascals. So, ito yung ating tensile strength. 234.62 MPA. Paano siya gumawa ba? Paano siya nag-auto-correct? Paano siya nag-auto-correct? Yan. And, yan. So now, let's compute for the modulus of resilience. So the modulus of resilience is just the amount, or this is basically a measure of the amount of energy per unit uh, volume that our material can absorb before plastically uh, deforming. So in the chart, or in our stress strain diagram, we get that by getting the area under our stress strain diagram that is of the elastic region. And the demarcation point natin is our yield point. From our previous calculation, we know that the yield strength is at 140 megapascal. So we can then get yung ating yield strain, yung dito, kung ano yung strain na correspond to that, using our Fuchs law, stress is equal to modulus of elasticity times strain. Manipulating this one, we'll get strain is equal to stress over E. Sorry, stress over E. Then, we can assume, also another assumption, it is a valid assumption then to assume that this area here can be approximated by a triangle. And yung triangle na yun, it will be one half base times height. So, area of a triangle, triangle is equal to 1 half, 0 0.5 times base times height. Where yung base times height natin, this is yield stress or yield strength times yung ating yield strain. So, yung yield strength natin yung height. So, balik na natin para mas clear siya. Yield strain is the base and yield stress is the, or yield strength is the height. So to get the area of that triangle, uh, first we get yung strain. Strain at is stress over E. So this will become 140 divided by yung ating modulus of plasticity, which is 48,791. It's parang lang units nila. So, equate those two, you will get 0 0.02869. Then, to get yung area of triangle natin, we just uh, use this formula. 0 0.5 times, okay, equal to 0 0.5 times 140, or yield strain, times 0 0.02869. Multiplied by our yield stress, 140, we'll get 0 0.2008567.15. This unit set is mega pascals. But since we are modules of resilience, ang mas gusto natin actually units is this one. Uh, mega joules per meter cube. Bakit ito? Kasi the modulus of resilience is a measure of or parang a proportionality constant with the amount of energy that a material can store per unit volume. So amount of energy, joules, per unit volume, meter cube. So this will become 0 0.200856 megajoules per meter cube. So ito yung modulus of resilience natin. But... Functionally, unit na yan is equal rin sa megapascals. And lastly, to get the ductility in percent elongation, ito, what is the ductility in percent elongation? 
the ductility is just the measure of the strain at fracture. So how would we get that? We just look at the last strain point. Ito. So at this point, nag-fracture na siya. So kung ano yung strain na nandito, ito yung ating ductility or percent elongation. So yung ductility natin or a strain natin is 0 0.11. In percent elongation, that would be equal to ito. And since percent yung hinahanap natin, times 100 lang siya. So it's 11%. So with that, we've answered your problem and we have successfully interpreted itong stress strain diagram natin. So thank you and hope you all are having a wonderful day.